We're going to do is rapid sequence intubation. This patient is an overdose, so uh, she's not all that tachymic, but she's not protecting her airway all that well. So what we're going to do is we're going to intubate her to protect her airway. Uh, in preparation for the intubation, what you need to do is make sure that the entire head of the bed is ready to go, and that includes you need know, 100% non-rebreather on the patient, suction set up so that you can suction the patient, suction should be turned all the way up to full and should not be on intermittent. In addition, you need bag valve mask set up and with air flowing to it. The capnometer needs to be set up and calibrated so that we know when the tube is in. The whole idea behind the rapid sequence intubation is to be able to get the endotracheal tube into the trachea and minimize the risk of the patient either becoming hypoxic or the patient uh, vomiting and aspirating. So she's not protecting her airway very, very well. She's protecting it a little bit. And the idea is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to put the endotracheal tube into her and we'll protect their airway the rest of the way and we'll make sure we can control her respirations as well. We've got 100% non-rebreather on her because what we want to do is we want to wash all the nitrogen out of her lungs and be able to just have oxygen in there. So that'll give us about a minute or two to put the endotracheal tube in. As soon as we push our meds, she's going to lose the rest of her airway reflexes because we're going to paralyze her as well as sedate her a little bit more. As soon as we push the medicines, Kate's going to put some pressure on the cricothyroid membrane and that's going to include the esophagus. She's also going to put a little bit of pressure that's going to push the uh, cricothyroid me membrane backwards, upward, and to the right. So backwards, upward, rightward pressure, burp is a mnemonic for it, and that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. In addition, we've got the endotracheal tube prepared. It's got a syringe on it, a 10cc syringe, so we can blow the balloon up and we've got a laryngoscope already set up to go and we've checked the light on it. We're going to do her with uh, rocuronium and ketamine and when you use rocuronium it's the opposite of what a lot of people think. We push the rocuronium first, which is the paralytic, we wait 15 seconds and then we're going to go ahead and push the sedative agent. In her case we're using ketamine because the blood pressure is a little bit on the low side. Okay, go ahead and push the rocuronium. All right. So the rocuronium is going in now. Okay, and we're going to wait about 15 seconds and then we're going to push the sedative. In this case, we're going with ketamine on heart. Okay, push the ketamine. And what you generally find is Again, because she's an overdose, she's waxing and waning a little bit. If we weren't stimulating her, she'd go completely to sleep. She's really not protecting her airway great. Okay, go ahead and put a little bit of cricose pressure on her. Okay, you can see how rapidly the medicines work. When the laryngoscope goes in, we're going to sweep the tongue to the left. We can visualize the cord fairly clearly, but we don't release the pressure on the cricoid membrane until the balloon's blown up and we're in where we should be. And we can see within one breath, Entitled CO2 is showing here, and she's at 43, which shows us that we got her intubated at a pretty good clip. She didn't become hypoxic on us, and she didn't retain too much carbon dioxide. What we're going to do is take a quick listen. So we have good breath sounds, and we're at about 22 at the lift. Her end title is 41, which is right where we want it to be. Now Kate's got her tube tamer that we're going to put on here to secure the endotracheal tube. And what you do is you take the stickies off of both of these. I'm going to flip this around the NG tube, which you happen to have in. This locks in here. There's a little piece of tape here. And then what this will do is secure the ET tube in the right position. Okay. 
The only way we know this tube is in is to look at this waveform on the capnometer. If we don't see that, we don't know it's in. In addition, though, by reading the actual number here, Bonnie knows exactly how much to ventilate her. So we're not hyperventilating her, and we're not hypoventilating her. Tubes in place. We got good breast downs on both sides. Her pulse ox is 100%. She's a little bit tachycardic, and now we're just going to repeat her blood pressure. With the ketamine in there, her blood pressure should be pretty good, so it should not be a problem there. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'll get a chest X-ray, confirm the position, and now we can bring respiratory in here because there's usually never enough room to put respiratory and the ventilator in here at the same time during the intubation. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks. Thank you.